The trash thrown into the North Pacific Ocean has an obvious negative effect on the environment, but there are also chemicals emitted from the waste that are threatening the ocean's marine life. George Moore, an oceanographer, discovered the Pacific trash jar in 1997. It is a jar of marine litter in the central North Pacific Ocean. It extends over an indeterminate area estimated to be twice the size of Texas. Scientists say the garbage patch is just one of five that may be caught in giant gyres scattered around the world's oceans. There is no specific standard for determining the boundary between normal and elevated levels of pollutants, but it is said to double in size every decade. Every decade. The gyre consists of pelagic debris and plastics and chemical sludge trapped by the currents of the North Pacific gyre. In this area, there is little wind and a high pressure system, and is usually avoided by sailors. It is estimated that there is six kilograms of trash for every kilogram of natural plankton. Plastic is believed to constitute 90% of all rubbish floating in the oceans. It is the most common refuse in the patch because it is lightweight, durable, and an omnipresent disposable product in both advanced and developing societies. It can float along for hundreds of miles before being caught in a gyre and then over time breaking down. The the UN Environment Program estimated in 2006 that every square mile of ocean contains 46,000 pieces of floating plastic. Some of the trash doesn't break down, not even in the lifetime of the grandchildren of those who threw it away. But once the other pieces of plastic do split into pieces, the fragments look like confetti in the water. Millions, billions, trillions, and more of these particles are floating in the world's trash-filled gyres. The main problem of the Pacific trash gyre is a concern of the amount of chemicals being emitted from the trash and other pollutants, such as plastic. They are affecting not only the ocean environment, but also the animals in it and out of the water. The estimated 80% of garbage comes from land-based sources and 20% from ships. For example, a typical 3,000 passenger cruise ship produces over 8 tons of solid waste weekly a major amount of which ends up in the patch as most of the waste is organic. There is a substantial effect on the environment due to the Pacific trash jar. Larger items in the vortex are the visible signs of much larger problem. These big items do not degrade like natural materials. At sea and on shore, under the influence of the sunlight, wave action, and mechanical abrasion, they simply break down slowly into even smaller particles. The larger items, however, are consumed by seabirds and other animals which mistake them for prey. Many seabirds and their chicks have been found dead, their stomachs filled with medium-sized plastic items such as bottle tops, sliders, and balloons. A turtle found dead in Hawaii had over a thousand pieces of plastic in its stomach and intestines. It has been estimated that over a million seabirds and 100,000 marine mammals and sea turtles are killed each year by ingestion of plastics or entanglement. Animals can be entangled and discarded, netting and line. Even tiny jellyfish-like creatures become entangled in lengths of plastic filament or eat the small plastic particles floating in the water. The floating plastics can also affect marine ecosystems in a surprising way by providing a ready surface for organisms to live on. These plants and animals can then be transported on the plastic far outside their normal habitat. These ocean hitchhikers can then invade new habitats to become possible nuisance species. Of course, not all plastic floats. In fact, around 70% of discarded plastic sinks to the bottom. In the North Sea, Dutch scientists have counted around 110 pieces of litter for every square kilometer of the seabed, a staggering 600,000 tons in the North Sea alone. These plastics can smother the sea bottom and kill the marine life which is found there. Additionally, Fish on the low end of the food chain consume tiny bits of plastic, and they're in turn eaten by larger fish, which we catch and eat. So we're not quite literally eating the plastic we produce. There's a sinister twist to all this as well. The plastics can act as a sort of chemical sponge. They can concentrate many of the most damaging of the pollutants found in the world's oceans, the persistent organic pollutants, also known as POPs. So any animal eating these pieces of plastic debris will also be taking in highly toxic pollutants. Micro pellets used in abrasive cleaners are also found in the gyre and are highly toxic. The floating debris can absorb organic pollutants from seawater, including PCBs, DDT, and PAHs. Aside from toxic effects, when ingested, some of these are mistaken by the endocrine system as estradiol, causing hormone disruption in the infected animal. 
These toxin-containing plastic pieces are also eaten by jellyfish, which are then eaten by larger fish. Many of these fish are then consumed by humans, resulting in their ingestion of toxic chemicals. Fish are ingesting toxins at such a rate that soon they will no longer be safe to eat. So not only is the marine environment being destroyed and contaminated, but humans are as well, and by their own fault. The issue of plastic debris is the one that needs to be urgently addressed. At the personal level, we can all contribute by avoiding plastics in the things we buy and by disposing of our waste responsibly. Obviously, though, there is a need to make ship owners and operators, offshore platforms, and fishing boat operators more aware of the consequences of irresponsible disposal of plastic items. With so many threats to the world oceans, including pollution, like the plastics getting stuck in this huge trash vortex, overfishing, and climate change, we urgently need to rescue marine biodiversity in the most effective way possible. You can help today by joining the call for network of marine reserves that will protect 40% of the world's oceans. If things do not get better in the Pacific trash dryer, the animals within that area will continue to die and choke on the plastic and other debris that lay in this part. Not only does it just kill the animals trapped in the trash dryer, but the chemicals that come out of the plastics, for example, female estrogen, can change the sexes of many animals. If there is one sex of one species in that part of the ocean, it will eventually become extinct. Also, if this problem does not get better, the size of it will keep growing and it will eventually grow at an alarming rate. Currently, it is twice the size of the continental U.S., which is absurd that we have not taken care of this problem at once. The toxins within the trash, though, are what threaten the life of the animals in that area the most. And if the trash does not stop floating there, the lives of the animals in that area now will be even more endangered, and eventually, if this problem does not stop, the animals in other areas will be affected as well.